Hey guys, Andy here and I'm excited for another video today where we're talking about another one of these new concepts or new topics that's being added to the Greenbelt Body of Knowledge and that's all about implementation planning. Remember, the ASQ Greenbelt Body of Knowledge is changing in August of 2022, so if your exam is, is in that month or later, this new video, this new topic is for you. By the way, stick around if you're preparing for the Greenbelt exam, stick around to the very end of the video. I've got a special resource just for you, specific to these new topics being added to the body of knowledge that I think that's completely free and I know you're gonna love it. And uh, let's get over to the computer and get started. All right, let's take a look at today's video. So I always love to start these videos by talking about specifically the body of knowledge. What does ASQ expect you to know to be successful during the, the Greenbelt exam? And here's that new topic. Remember, we're talking about one of the new topics being added to the body of knowledge, and this is all about implementation planning. And when we read the body of knowledge, what we learn is we have to be able to apply implementation planning by using tools like proof of concepts, simulations, and pilot testings. That is gonna be the subject of today's lecture. Before we get into it though, I wanna give you some context. So look here, right, we're in the improve phase, meaning that if, if you're following along in the body of knowledge, we follow the demand process. We've defined our problem, we've measured our problem, we've analyzed our problem, and now that we understand the root cause, right, now that we've analyzed the problem, and now that we understand the root cause, it's time to identify and implement some sort of improvement. You could call this a corrective action, you could call it a Kaizen, call it whatever you want, but at the end of the day, it's now time to find the right solution for your problem. Now this can be one of the hardest things that a greenbelt can do because there's a there can often be multiple solutions for the problem you're trying to solve. And so this whole idea of implementation planning is all about getting to the right solution and answering really important questions like, first of all, how do you know if a solution is going to address the problem or how do you choose the right solution? And so we're going to talk about, we're going to cover both of those concepts in today's video. As a general rule though, if you look at what the body of knowledge says, proof of concepts, simulations, and pilot testing, essentially the answer is to try out the solution on the small scale. You want to de-risk your project, de-risk your activity by implementing your solution on a small scale and measuring the effectiveness of that uh, solution. So let's talk about these three different ideas. What is a proof of concept? A proof of concept is essentially a small scale version of the proposed solution. So let's say you're talking about a design change. Let's say your Greenbelt project is to modify or improve your product in some way to add a new feature and solve a problem. If you want to measure the effectiveness of that improvement, build a prototype. Build a small scale prototype that essentially proves your concept. That's what we mean by proof of concept. If you're in more of a manufacturing setting and you're making some sort of process improvement, this oftentimes means implementing a small scale version of that solution to test the effectiveness of your concept. So that's one tool you can use to essentially test whether or not a solution is gonna be effective or not. The other tool that's often used is this idea of a simulation. So there's two ways to simulate a proposed solution. One of the ways I've seen it done, and you can see it over here on the left, is to use software like FlexSim. So in the past, I've used software uh, called FlexSim, where essentially you can model your production environment, equipment, feeds, speeds, capacities. You can model your layout. You can model a uh, human effort or, or human traffic. You can, you can model, essentially, you can create a, an electronic model of your production facility and then see what, what changes might occur. Let's say you're relaying out your production floor you can simulate that using software to see whether or not that change is going to be effective. The other way to do that is to simulate a change in an offline way. Let me give you an example of this. At one point in my career, I was working to improve a, a major product line, and I had noticed that the flow of our product seemed to be creating a lot of waste through the use of automated conveyors. We had a lot of automated conveyors that were moving product around our production floor, and I believed that those conveyors were creating a lot of waste. But before I could justify removing that expensive automated conveyance, I had to prove that my future solution was going to be effective. So what my boss asked me to do is he asked me to, to create a full-scale replica 
of my future solution using cardboard mockups. So we literally took cardboard boxes, created full-scale mockups of our test equipment, our, our tooling, our tables, our chairs, our equipment, everything. We went out to the warehouse. We, we taped off the floor. We said, hey, this is the amount of space we have on the production floor. Here's exactly how we're going to lay out our equipment in the future. And we essentially created an offline simulation to essentially demonstrate that the, the proposed solution we were going to put into place was going to be effective. And, we, and that was important to do because we were about to remove a lot of expensive automated equipment that would have been basically irreversible once we removed it. And so simulations can be a really powerful tool to help you demonstrate the effectiveness of a change before you actually do it. The third part is a pilot test. Right. If you're if you're again, if you're in a manufacturing environment and you want to make a corrective action, a Kaizen, a change and improvement to your production process, oftentimes running a pilot is a great way to demonstrate the effectiveness. If you do this right, you should prescribe, hey, we're going to run this for one shift, three shifts, four days, five days. And we're going to collect data along the way to demonstrate that both our change is effective and we're not having a negative impact on other quality attributes or any other critical aspects about our, our process, we're going to use a pilot test or a pilot run to essentially demonstrate the effectiveness. Now, once you've demonstrated that a, a solution or multiple solutions will effectively address your problem, you still might have this uh, problem of how to choose the right solution. So in the course, in, in the Greenbelt Body of Knowledge, we talk about a tool called the Prioritization Matrix. Now, this tool is fundamentally a decision-making tool. That's what we're doing right now. We're trying to make a decision. Now, the best way to make an objective decision is to define your decision-making criteria and then essentially rank all of your different options based on those criteria. So in terms of choosing the right solution, it could be cost or ease of implementation or the, the speed or the timeliness of implementation, the estimated sustainability, right? What is the long-term sustainability or, or viability of that solution? What is the level of organizational acceptance? Is everybody going to be on board with the proposed solution? Or what's the customer impact? Is there going to be a customer impact, both positive or negative? And what are some of the risks that might be associated, right, audit risk or compliance risk, that might be associated with some of the proposed solutions? Now, here's an example of a prioritization matrix, and we talk about this more in the course. But essentially, the way this works is you list out the, the different projects that you're considering, right? Let's call these corrective actions or, or potential solutions to your problem. And then you define your criteria. What is the effectiveness of the, of the change, right? One solution might be more effective than the other. What's the cost and what's the timeline, right? What's the, how quickly can we implement this solution? And then use those criteria, rank these different solutions against each other to essentially objectively determine what solution is right in this given situation. And that's how you make the right decision. That's how you choose the right solution to implement for your particular problem. Now, the next thing that we absolutely have to talk about when it comes to implementation planning is communication. One of the key aspects of implementing any change is communication. In fact, that's critical for project management. Here we are, we're in the improve phase of your project, meaning that we've created a lot of deliverables, we've done our pilot testing, we've made a decision, and now we're about to implement our solution. Communication at this point is key. Make sure all of your stakeholders have been informed and made aware of the decision you just made. Before you make that decision, make sure you've consulted with all of the right people and stakeholders and team members to essentially improve the decision-making process, right? Consult with the right people. This is such a key aspect of making changes happen, especially when you're in the final stages of a project and you're trying to go live with a solution. Make sure to inform the right people so that they see the change coming and they're not blindsided and you have their full support. Communication is absolutely key. That is it for today. Remember, if you're preparing for the Greenbelt exam and you're worried about these, these new tools that are being added to the body of knowledge, I want to share this, this free resource. This is a free course where I'm covering the 14 new tools for the Greenbelt exam. You can see chapter 20 here is implementation planning, but I cover all of the new tools being added to the body of knowledge. If you want to check that out, go to greenbeltacademy.com slash new tools. It's completely free to sign up, and I would love to share that free resource with you. If you love this video, 
hit that thumbs up button. That way, other people just like you who are on that green belt journey and trying to pass the green belt exam can find the same content and benefit from it like you have. And if you want to stay on that journey with me and continue learning and continue growing, hit that subscribe button. That way, as I publish new content, that you it gets shared with you and you can, again, stay on that journey and continue learning and growing and ultimately pass the green belt exam. All right, that's it for me. I hope you loved today's video. Stay tuned for the next one, and I'll see you in the future. Bye.